but we're just going to, for today, do the process of finding an object and just casting that object so you can make little clay reliefs. But as I said, if you've got a rolling pin, that's even better. Apparently, I lack in a rolling pin, so I'm just having to kind of squish it um, as flat as I can get it, imprinting it in to about halfway. And uh, that's one half of your mould. Well, the more complicated the object, the more sort of complex the mould is going to be in terms of how it fits together. And if you've got overhangs or anything that is going to, you know, plaster is going to get under, the mould itself is going to get caught. So, in a sense, as well, you once, once you have the object and you've embedded it in the clay. You've got to look at the object and work out where you think it's going to, the plaster's going to get stuck. So if you think, oh, it's going to get, you know, plaster's going to get stuck under there, you literally just, you just kind of smooth it over and allow it. So it, it just kind of contours nicely. So when you release, when we stick them together, we want them to be able to stick together exactly in the way that they should fit together. So you literally, it's really simple. You just quite literally key in some holes there and uh, what was that yesterday watching a video and uh, I normally do it this way but this bloke just keyed in sort of this way as well so it's fairly you know as long as you have what are called keys and those are joining those two moulds together you can pretty much use anything you just want to build a wall around this bit of clay so whether it's a rough bit of metal or anything like that that you can gaffer tape together, I think was what we were looking at as well, but all just some wood and you screw it together. So you sort of make a little casing for it. Now, just a rough bit of, you know, we're just trying to build a wall, so we don't need to pilot hole it really, because, you know, it's just going to get covered in plaster. So it, in a sense, you just get it together, so you'll in completely encase this. Um, and as I said, any little bits that are sort of, if you can see that, you know, the little gaps there, you just want to seal up with a bit more clay. And then you've got to have uh, a release agent, which I've just got cooking oil. Um, with plaster, you can be pretty versatile. Uh, you just liberally brush it in. And the whole thing is you brush the clay, the actual thing you're... Uh, taken a mould off and you brush the sides. I think the kind of clue is that it's a, you know, it's a release agent, you don't want the plaster to get stuck on because it's going to be a pain to actually rip it off and casting plaster just sets harder, that's the kind of main difference. Builder plaster is quite crumbly, so when you're kind of getting this sort of you know, thickness, it's just going to hold. I think this is the other thing, a lot of people have sculpting forget sometimes the whole process that sometimes it is a little bit tedious and you do have to be prepared of little bits of cuts and bits of wood and all this stuff the easiest way is start with the water first and you literally sprinkle in the plaster um, just <laughs> sprinkle it with your hands and it's a case of um, just liberally kind of going for it but evenly as evenly as you can get you don't just want to sort of chuck it in because that's kind of where it starts to lump together and then in terms of the actual ratio you just kind of keep on sprinkling and letting it soak up the water it's probably really healthy <coughs> And you just kind of let it get to a point where it's starting to peak up. You'll see just the kind of plaster starts to. I try and show you guys, but you know you get sort of peaks and troughs and that sort of thing. And you, and the whole thing with this is the longer you leave it to soak in this state, the better it's going to turn out when you mix it together. Um, however, you can get away with uh, doing what I'm about to do and just mix it straight away. The actual drying time, in that sort of process, the way it soaks up is just how rigid it's going to actually set. And then in the sense of the um, 
how long it takes to set is how long you stir it for. So the more you, what we're saying, agitate it, is the, uh, is, you know, the quicker it's going to actually set. And um, just go for it. You don't need to, you know, we do have, if you're mixing large amounts of plaster, we do actually have an attachment for a drill, which you can then do it electronically, but uh, when it's this sort of size, you just do it with your hands because it's easiest to do that sort of way. Uh, as I said, the longer you mix it, the quicker it's going to set, and the same with the longer you soak it, it's probably up to about 10 minutes that it's best to soak it for, um, is the better for, for the whole process. For what I'm doing, just to show you guys, I'm rushing it. It's just a case of pouring it in at this point. Um, you don't have to use too much. You probably want to go about 20 centimetres above the actual piece. Entirely, again, depends on the thing you're casting, you know, how deep the impression is. So leave it like that, and then you just leave it to set. And once it's actually set, you will get, and you take, unscrew all of this, you'll get this part of the mould, and I just realised I've lost the um, little, Sometimes it gets stuck in this, in the clay, or sometimes it gets stuck in that. But because you've got the release agent on the actual plaster, you should be able to take it off pretty easily. <coughs> the clay is a clay. This is done now. You don't need to worry about the clay, so you can just rip it out of the clay. Unless you want to make loads of different moulds with the same thing. Kind of the purpose of a mould is that you use the mould to make loads of things. You then want to put the release agent again on the actual mould. And um, I tend to put release agent first and then set the actual thing again back into where it needs to be and again. And it is just a case of using the same wall and always try and remember you know, which, which way this you put round on the other side and also which way the wall was sitting because you want the kind of tightest fit because it's just easier for yourself as well. Build the wall back on, I'm just realize I use that wall now. But yeah, you build the wall again and repeat this process. You just pour it on top and let that set. And once it's set, it will look a little daunting. It will look like it's going to be stuck together, but you have to really let it set. So it's probably kind of an overnight thing at that point. You have to jimmy it a little bit, but then you've got the two part mold. And that should hopefully release out fairly easier the plaster because you've used the release agent. And that's what I'm saying, you've got this section here. And that's ready to actually start making moulds out of, making actual objects out of. Um, for this example I've used, I've just uh, actually done a sort of impression of clay. But there's no sort of reason why you can't put the mould together and actually use the release agent to make plaster moulds again. You can actually make plaster objects out of this mould. The only thing you can't really do is make um, resin objects or any sort of plastic polyurethane substance. You've got to remember that plaster's um, porous, so any plastics or any solvent is just going to get really stuck into it and it's not going to be really usable as a mould. It's just a mess. That's where we'll be going on to the next stage of silicone, and that's where there's an application of silicone. Why you use silicone is because you use it for resins. But just kind of remember this process, because it's adaptable for lots of different other mould making processes. But at this stage, so we want to get one of these going. You stuff in clay into the actual mould. And I forgot to put, well, I forgot to say, Put release agent on, sorry, <laughs> forgetting the process myself. It's the bottom mould or whatever you choose to be the bottom mould. Just chuck in a bit of clay. And you want enough that it's going to be able to actually make the full impression. But the whole thing is if it doesn't, you just add a bit more, take the mould off and you can add a bit more. And just get this bit. And this is what I was saying about the keys. The keys just allow it to sit how it should sit. 
and it's almost better to slowly add a bit more clay but you'll get to a point where you'll just know you'll kind of be able to judge quite happily how much clay you're going to need and you can just go in and actually cut around the excess clay at this point and it's sort of easier to do it now so when you do demold it it's a little easier and the thing with this and that's a stage where this is kind of where it's kind of good to think about how it sits in the mold so, but I think it's just a case of getting used to it, doing it, and making mistakes. And, and you, it's almost pointless to explain to a minute detail the exact things you have to do. It's just a case of getting involved and actually doing it, and you'll learn. And you put as much in until you see little kind of peaks rising on the surface, yeah, we had lots of like lots islands. Of those, so right. But don't mix your plaster while in between pouring in, because then you can't tell how much you're putting in. So you, you put the water in, and then you sprinkle, 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 until you have the little islands appear. And then you wait, and then you agitate. Yes, that's the way. To okay, what's going on here? We have a small gap. Oh dear. So we are filling, filling on the outside. To make okay. Sure it Very wise. <laughs> Just in case. We don't want any explosions. No, we don't. Tell me when to How much you Yeah, still. Oh, is there anything to do? Oh, no, it's doing Oh, is there any coming out? Feel the heat. Right, okay, how are we doing? We're just going to have to do this. Wait, let's just do it. Oh. Okay. Right. So, so try to remember which way round the um, wood mould went and everything, because you're going to put that round the plaster bit now. Oh yeah, oh god. See which it fits, it'll be fine. Well, that's right round that. I'll have to sit this in. Okay, so I didn't think though, the front bit with all the patterns on, is it going to come out? So. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 You've got a bit extra there. Lovely. Go and find a footprint and pour it in and you get one of those. <laughs> Which is very exciting. And that they might break quite easily. What? The, the, the small thing. Too dainty. 
too dainty. Yeah, but that's part of doing it. Discovery. Let's go and take the one out of the, uh, the mud. Oh yeah, I'd be interested to see that. <laughs> what was it? Was it too much? Well, it seeps in underneath. Yeah. This is what cracks. I'm saying. You need to think about the undercut. Yeah. Well, that's that's part and parcel. You've got to. This is part and parcel of doing it.